Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I am your host, Christopher Brown. Now, in a recent turn of events in High Prairie, Alberta, the anticipated recall effort against Mayor Brian Panasuk and two councillors, Donna Dianic and James Walke, has fallen short. Now, High Prairie CAO Bill McKenna confirmed the outcome, stating the town of High Prairie did not receive any completed petitions as of the deadline, Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024, at 10 a.m. Consequently, the mayor and two councillors will now continue on in their roles as representatives of the town of High Prairie. Now, the recall initiatives directed at removing these officials from office failed to gather the required 1,026 signatures per petition, as mandated by the Municipal Governing Act. Despite grassroots efforts and community discontent, the threshold remained unmet, granting mayor and the two councillors a reprieve from potential dismissal. Now, this recent development marks the third unsuccessful or deemed unnecessary recall effort in the province within the past month. Wetaskiwin Mayor Tyler Gandam avoided a recall petition in his community when the deadline passed without submissions in Wetaskiwin, while in Donaldum, Mayor Doug Brooker preemptively resigned before such measures could be initiated, rendering the recall unnecessary. Now, since the inception of recall legislation in Alberta, instances of successful recalls have been rare, with only one notable case in the village of Riley where Mayor Nick Lee was successfully removed from office. Now, we had the pleasure to sit down with High Prairie Councillor James Walke for a one-on-one -on -one interview moments after the announcement of the recall petition being unsuccessful was made. This is Municipal Affairs. Councillor, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, the news came out this morning. It was posted, uh, the, I shouldn't say this morning, but this afternoon. Uh, the three recall petitions for High Prairie, which you were a part of one of them, uh, failed to submit. Uh, how are you feeling uh, sort of now that the official news has been released? Uh, well, you know, it's uh, it, it's a weight off for sure. I mean, uh, yeah, I was worried, right? I mean, you never know how these things are going to go. There's a process in place and the process was followed. And um, they, I, I guess, I, I don't know how many signatures they got. I guess they didn't get enough and they didn't present the the petition. So, you know, now we can get on with, with governing in the town and, you know, making things better. I've worked my, you know, the better part of my adult life. Um, well, my older life, let's not, say i'm an adult here um but uh you know i've worked a long time to try and make the community better and and uh being able to do that with without the worry of the recall uh over my head is is good like i lost sleep over it chris i i honest to god i'm laying awake at night and i'm like god like so so yeah. I'm, I'm, so for those I'm who are listening right now who may not know what transpired, but this started, I I, I want to say back in February of this year when uh, yeah. uh, there was a sort of a commotion. I want to say commotion because I don't <laughs> want to give it the weight that it deserves, but a commotion at council where council asked the mayor and two councillors, including yourself, to resign. Uh, you did not. And then they basically came in the day after and they filed this recall petition against the mayor and yourself and the councillor. And I forget the yeah, councillor's name. Yeah. When they originally approached you, and I'm going to go back to the beginning here, if you don't mind for a second, when they originally approached you to say recall, did you see this? Was this out of the blue or had you had rumblings that this was coming down the pipes prior to this recall petition even being filed against yourself? Uh, no, it was, I mean, they asked, they asked everybody on council to resign if I'm re remembering correctly. It wasn't just the three of us, they, you know, the, People were, you know, they pe people were upset with decisions that were made, and you know what? I get that. I understand. Um, we're going to make decisions that aren't popular. Hell, we're going to make a decision that afterwards, sometimes we're going to look at it and go, "Oops." So, you know, I I get people. I understand that people are upset. Uh, I did not expect a recall petition. Uh, that that was a bit of a shock. So. You know, I just got the word the other day that um, 
no petition was was filed with the town so at that point then i guess it just it stops the process um you know yeah i'm sleeping a little bit better at night now knowing that that's done it like so normally i not- sleep like the dead and and there was a lot of nights where i was just laying in bed two three o'clock in the morning thinking about this and thinking god i gotta get up in three hours and go to work so for the last two and a half months, hypothetically, say two two and a half months, I think it was a sixty a ninety day period where they can collect the signatures to file. Yeah, you had this over your head. Did you change? And I'm asking this because you're the first person who's coming on the show to talk about the process that they went through. Did yeah. the process change you as a municipal politician? Do you look at decisions now? with this weight over your head or while you were going through this process of recall uh, with a weight over your head saying, okay, I have to be sure of the decisions I make because if I make the wrong decision in this period where people could sign a piece of paper and potentially oust me, I have to make sure that I'm not just making the best decision, but I'm making a decision that is not going to potentially impact my ability to be at this council table. You know, it certainly opened my eyes a little bit, you know, that, I mean, like the, the process is in place, it can be used. And um, knowing that now, I mean, I, well, I mean, you, you know it, but you know, you don't really, it's like, you don't, you don't know what to expect until you actually go through something. Uh, has it changed me as a counselor? You know, you, you, you always, it's not easy to sit around that table. Um, it, it, it recall petition or not, yeah. uh, the the decisions that you make are are always difficult ones. I mean, we're we're the level of government that is the closest to the people. So when we make a decision and I go buy milk, I'm going to hear about it. Did right? you hear? Did you hear comments during the recall petition period where from residents or? Was it a non-issue? Because I, I, I read the South Peace News on a regular basis down here in Calgary, because why not? I used to live up in Fost, Alberta, so I, I still remember reading Chris Clegg uh, and reading what was going on. Did you get a sense, because it didn't seem like there was much media coverage, and because there's the period that goes on, and how much how many stories can you make out of one recall petition, but did you hear from residents about if you were doing a good job, if they were going to sign it, or was it sort of a, an apathetic tone in the community to say, okay, someone's filed a recall petition? Um, I, I had a lot of people um, tell me that they were supporting me, so um that that meant a lot that that always means a lot um so that that helped quite a bit uh i i didn't have anybody flat out say that no you're a dick i'm signing the petition to get your ass out of there (laughs) (laughs) sorry about that no worries. Uh, um, I, I lo- you're, the joys you're the first. Of editing. The joys of um, editing on a Friday night. Um, but what's the next steps for you now? So now that this is uh, released from over top of your head, no other recall petition can be filed against you in the remaining a year and a half because you you get one shot at recall petitions according to the legislation provincially so this that was it oh, okay. they had one shot and that was it i'm not sure if that's breaking news to you but congratulations that is. i didn't know that i i didn't realize that you only get one shot at i know i know that in the first year and in the last year yeah you can't file uh a a recall petition but i didn't realize that you only get one shot at it so because then it's the continuous basis right and that's what i think they were trying to stop it could change by the time this airs tomorrow but i'm assuming the legislature is not going to come back tomorrow and say okay we got to make sure what's going on in high prairie gets overturned so that being said from what i gather and from the conversations i've had with both alberta municipalities and municipal affairs it's a one shot because then you're not constantly being threatened with it it's you'd get one shot at and that's that and that's the entire community 
now that you're out of this window, you go back to work. You just had a council yeah. meeting earlier this week because I watched part of it because that's what I do on a Tuesday afternoon on Wednesday morning is watch uh, council meetings from across Canada. Do you do you look at the issues now in a different light? Because now you have heard from people that the decisions you've made or the decisions you have been making aren't in the best interest for them. Or do you look at them now in, in the exact same light that you looked prior to this recall petition and say, okay, I'm going to make the tough decisions. Yes, I understand that people aren't going to be happy with all of them, but I have to be there because that's what the people of High Prairie have elected me to do. Yeah, I mean, you are going to, I mean, for me at least, you always try to make the best decisions. And uh, it's, um, yeah, it opens your eyes a little bit. That You know what? Uh, be a little bit more aware in the moment. You're not always going to make the right decision. I don't think that there's a, a council anywhere that'll say, oh, yeah, everything that we did was perfect. How arrogant right? Because your decision affects people every single day um, for good or for bad. And, you know, sometimes a decision that's going to be good for this person, it's not so good for this person. Or, you know, a decision that's not good for this group of people, but this person is going to be really... You've gone through this process. You're going to go back to work the next day. So Monday morning when you wake up, you'll be the counselor for High Prairie still. And you were it as of Tuesday when the deadline passed at uh, 10 o'clock in the after in the morning. Do you now look towards the next election and say, do I want to put myself through this again? If the next election comes around and I get reelected, and I know I'm asking you to basically announce your reelection plans in 2024 in an election year of 2025, but do you have those conversations with uh, your family to say, okay, do I want these sleepless nights again? If a year after the election, I get reelected and another recall petition gets filed against me, do I have it in me to have these sleepless nights? Or do you just take it one day at a time until that next election and you make that decision? Right now, I plan on, on running again uh, next year. My wife would be more than happy if I didn't. <laughs> um but uh, you know, I'm I'm I, I Chris. I've wanted to be in politics since I was six years old, and and I've been very fortunate to be elected, um, you know, for twelve years previously, and to be back for for another term here. Um, it it's a privilege to serve on a council. I. Um, I, I do enjoy it the the you know even even considering the sleepless nights I enjoy the work I enjoy making my community better you know I want to be able to say to my grandkids in you know well if I ever have grandkids um you know yeah your dad helped do that you know we're here because of decisions that your dad helped make so your dad your grandfather god it's, yeah, it's been, been a, it's a friday night i understand <laughs> um you you uh, yourself along with your fellow counselor and the mayor have no, now all been successfully unsuccessful successfully unsuccessfully recalled in some sense. Um, and I said that was my last question, but I'm the host of the show, so I can ask a follow-up question because I want to ask this question. I should have asked this question earlier on. You, the three of you have probably become close over the last, not saying you weren't close beforehand, but when you go through this by yourself, it's a unique experience. But when you go through this with two other members of council, uh, that you're serving with. It's a unique beast. And I can imagine there's been conversations between yourself, the fellow, your fellow counselor and the mayor to talk about the path forward. If, if potentially something does happen, looking back on the last, uh, re during the recall period, do you, do you, do you, are you glad that you went through it with somebody? And I know that's a stupid question to ask, but I think we see recall petitions popping up across Alberta right now. We saw one in Wetaskiwin. We saw one in Calgary. We saw Riley, the only one to be successful at this date. Donalda had one, the Medicine Hat. And now just recently, three in Onaway have just been filed literally last week. 
going through this with two other members of council, do you do you feel there was a sense of not so lonely, uh, lonely island at the end of the day? Well, I mean, misery loves company, right? It's uh, you never want to go through anything like that alone. Uh, it was, uh, I mean, it was nice to have somebody. Uh, God, I hate the way that sounds, but you know, I'm glad it wasn't just me. Um, it was, you know, the the anger that was directed towards us. It wasn't just towards us. It was really towards. Uh, the majority of council, the people were uh, dissatisfied with. I was told that uh, the three of us were chosen because we have the most experience on council. And you know what? I mean, that's that's fair. That I guess if you're going to draw the line somewhere, that's as good a place as any to draw the line. Um, and, Did you talk uh, to the petitioner during the period? Do you mind me asking? Um, well, the when they knocked on my door to see if I wanted to sign it. They actually knocked on your door? I mean, I don't oh. know where everybody lives either, so. Sorry, sorry, I shouldn't laugh at that, but that's kind of hilarious. Um, for, so for, I should, I should know I was this. Civil, that... You know, I, I, you know, I, I didn't yell at them. I, you know, I, we talked, right? And that, I mean, Clearly, I didn't sign it. That's um, good. But, uh, well, I mean, as a counselor, you, even if I wasn't on, I mean, this is the other part of it too, eh? even if I wasn't a, uh, <laughs> even if I wasn't part of the recall, as a counselor, I can't sign that because that breaks the code of conduct. Yeah. So. Um, but no, you know what I mean? I had a conversation with, with the person that knocked on my door and, um, you know, and then whatever, I mean, they, they went on and they were collecting signatures and that that's what they were trying to do, right? Is get the signatures required and like, you know, yes, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad I didn't go through it by myself. If I'd gone through it by myself, um, it would have hurt a lot. I mean, it, it hurts. Don't get me wrong. I, I, you know, they said, well, it's not personal. I'm like, well, it feels personal. Yeah. You know, I mean, especially in a small town. Um, but you know, if it had just been me, well, <clears throat> if I had screwed up so bad myself that they were coming after just me, well, I, you know, at that point, I really would have had to have considered my position on council you know so um i i'm glad so, it wasn't just you we are on the other side of this recall petition for yourself and like i said there are many others that have been filed or are in the current process of potentially trying to be recalled What's the advice that you would give other counselors or small town mayors about this process that you just went through? Because you've gone through it. You now have, uh, you're coming out the other side and people will probably reach out to you and say, counselor, James, what, what can I expect from this process? Because I want to be able to come out the other side and maybe not have as many sleepless <laughs> nights as you did. Well, I mean, stay in close contact with your CAO and and your fellow counselors, and uh, you know, and, and don't be afraid to talk to the petitioners if they knock on your door. Um, just you know, you go. There's a process in place. Follow the process, and um, it's easy to say, you know, just follow the process uh, and try not to lose sleep. You're going to. There, there's no way around that. You know, you're going to second guess yourself and uh, you're going to wonder yeah, what's going to happen, especially when it's up in the air. Um, but stay, you know, communicate with your CAO and as much as you can and, and uh, stay updated on progress and, you know, just, just do the best job that you can as a counselor. 
For transparency's sake, I should note that James and I do know each other from when I was up in Foz. Uh, him and uh, I, his mother, which I, I, I do want to talk about off the air here in two seconds, but uh, we lived in the same community and we knew we have mutual friends in common. So uh, I did know the counselor prior to this interview. This is not one out of the random blue, but um, I appreciate the time nonetheless to sit down and talk to me about this process that you've just gone through and now what happened happens now for yourself and i do appreciate your time oh, you're more than welcome now if this episode sparked your interest hit that subscribe button now stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs like you saw today to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches local government at work we're your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage from across Canada, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have hopefully come to enjoy over the last two years. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.